Hey, what's up guys? It's Max Merck here with this 2012 Mini Cooper S Coupe. And today, I'm gonna to be going over why I think this is one of the most quirky cars you could have bought just a couple of years ago brand new. And before we get started, I'd like to extend a big shout out to Jim Coleman Infinity located in Bethesda, Maryland for providing the car in this video. And if you guys are interested in this car or any new or used Infinity, be sure to check them out at 10,400 Auto Park Avenue in Bethesda, Maryland. So the most obvious and noticeable thing is pretty much the roof. What Mini has done is basically is taken their iconic legendary shape and pretty much thrown it away and uh, started with something else and we got this. However, now, uh, quite a few years after the design of this car was unveiled, and it's been pretty much been on the market, it's been discontinued now, they discontinued it in 2015, uh, because it really wasn't that much of a popular car. You really don't see these uh, that many of these on the road. However, I think in the future, this is gonna be one of those cars that's gonna be kind of iconic, because so few people bought them, and there's really not that many of them around because they weren't so popular. And it's just such a diversion from the traditional Mini Cooper look because you know, Mini Coopers, they all, it's same with Porsches, same with uh, Jeeps, they all have that iconic look. And this is them pretty much changing the complete top half of the car's look. Yeah, as you can see, you got this kind of really weird rear quarter glass here. Um, and then this is actually a spoiler that's kind of split in the middle. And then you can see the slope of the rear windshield compared to a normal Mini that's pretty much just straight upright and then back here you have this retractable spoiler which is once again very different from mini cooper because there's really nowhere else to put a spoiler on a traditional mini uh, but on this car they were able to put a power retractable one right there and this may or may not be true don't quote me on it but i have a feeling this may be functional because uh, just looking at the shape of this car doesn't seem quite aerodynamic so i i'd, I'd like to think uh, this is pretty functional, especially considering that it comes up on its own at around 50, 60 miles an hour or something like that. So now let's head up front and talk about some of the quirky things up here. So this is a Mini Cooper S, well, meaning that it's a sport model. So uh, you can see, first of all, you have uh, a bunch of vents up here. So you have this one vent up here. It has holes in it, but I don't think it is functional. I've looked underneath. I don't believe it's functional. Uh, however, down here you have vents that are functional. And this car comes equipped with the, the bi-xenons and they look really, really good. They also have these chrome headlamp washers on the side that are retractable and squirt uh, windshield washer fluid to clean the headlight and as you can see when the bi xenon light is turned on it has these little circles of light all throughout the uh, low beam and this is this car is from a time of really the beginning of all those led daytime running lights and all that stuff and i think this is such a nice design element it really gives the car a unique modern look and the next quirk involves opening the hood so as you can see when i go ahead and open up the hood there's actually some cutouts in the hood for the headlights so when i lift it up you can see uh, these are the headlight surrounds. Uh, this is not abnormal for minis. Pretty much all these new Mini Coopers have this. Uh, so there's really nothing special about that. But I just think uh, as a car, that's a pretty quirky thing to have. I really haven't seen that in any other car. And one more thing I actually noticed on the engine cover is that the badge, the Mini Cooper badge, is actually gold uh, as opposed to chrome. Um, and I don't mean real gold. I just mean that the color of it is finished in gold, uh, whereas many other manufacturers uh, put their badges in chrome or silver. Uh, I just never have seen a gold badge on an engine cover before. Now, to hop in the Mini, uh, this car doesn't have keyless access, so you have to use the key. Um, however, I will say the key itself is very different than most other cars. Mini Cooper has had this style key for a long time. Now, even the modern ones, the brand new ones, have a similar shape, although not exactly the same. But I, I've always loved these keys. I don't know what it is about them. I just think they're so cool and so different. Mini has really been able to pull off doing different things and being different uh, and still making it cool or at least with the key. I don't know about the design of the car. And the door handle itself uh, doesn't actually move. Uh, once again, this is nothing really special to this car. A lot of the minis of this era had door handles just like this, but there's a trigger on the back that you just squeeze to unlock it. But Mini has gone away from this in the newer models. I've, dri I've uh, actually driven the newer models and they don't have this. They have just traditional door handles that you pull. Um, and I don't know which one I like more. I like how cool this is, uh, but I feel like on a day-to-day -day basis it could get kind of annoying and it would just be a little bit easier pulling it but once again this is the quirky these are the quirky things that make up a mini cooper however what makes the coupe different is if you look back here you've got no rear seats and you'd think this is a pretty cramped uncomfortable car but you'd be surprised if you actually look up here there's cutouts in the headliner on both sides so you actually have a pretty significant amount of headroom despite it looking like a small car from the outside and funny enough despite this being only a two-seat car 
Uh, I think minis just reuse the seats from the normal ones so you can still uh, fold these back and it'll slide forward. And funny enough, you even have rear map pockets back here, uh, which is, I guess, is nice for storage, but you got no rear passengers. So uh, pretty much the only person who's gonna use it is the driver to store things. And you also have a third cup holder back here. So you have two in the front, uh, and I guess you just have one extra one for the driver or passenger because once again, nobody in the back is going to be using that. However, what's nice is that Mini has given you this, which is a little access door to the rear trunk compartment. So if you want to, you could shove stuff through there or uh, maybe have something. Uh, if you want to put something long in there as a pass through, it'll pass through to the interior. Um, and it's also lockable as well. So if you want, you can go ahead and lock that up. And you can see I also have these shelves set up in the rear trunk back here. So. Uh, it's pretty much all blocked off from view from the window but these are removable so if you want to you can just have uh this open so you can pretty much just take a bag and throw it back there if you want to but i think it looks a little bit better with the shelves stored the way they are now and pretty much the rest of the interior is standard mini cooper there's really nothing uh unique to the coupe but i still want to go over a couple of things uh that make this car so quirky uh, aside from the obvious however one thing that is quirky that most people probably don't know about is that uh something with the key it's a trick you can do with the key now this car doesn't have keyless access so you can see right now the key is not in the slot if i want to try and start the car it's not going to start and with other mini coopers of this era it's very similar to the old bmw keys where you insert it into the slot uh, just like that and it clicks into place and then you can go ahead and start the car however what most people don't know is that you can actually start the car and leave it running without the key even if you don't have keyless access and this actually works on some of the older bmws as well so uh let me give you a scenario you want to leave your car running let's say it's hot outside and you want to leave the ac on or if it's cold outside and you want to leave the heat on but you want to take the key and lock the car but your car doesn't have keyless access so if i go ahead and start up the car with the doors closed and i turn off the car and take out the key, I can actually go ahead and start the car once more, as long as the doors haven't been opened. And then I can go outside. And as you can see, I have the key right here, and you can hear the car is running. You can go ahead and lock the car from outside um, so nobody can get inside, but I can still leave it running. So once more, I'm gonna avoid the obvious stuff, uh, but I'll jump ahead to up here. So this is your rear view mirror, uh, your, and it's of course a dimming rear view mirror. Most cars either have an automatic dimming rear view mirror or a little switch right here to flip uh, but as you can see this car doesn't have that it just has this uh, and what people maybe a lot of people don't know is that on uh, these mini coopers and some of the bmw uh, older bmw cars as well uh, this is actually your rear view dimmer so if you go ahead and twist this and that will go ahead and dim it uh, and it's just very discreet and you wouldn't know it looks more of a design element or something else rather than being a functional dimmer uh, but that's that and one more thing i've always loved is the switches in these mini coopers it kind of looks like a fighter jet i mean everything even the light switches there or the, this is the switch for the spoiler so that th what this does is it'll go ahead and raise and lower the spoiler um, but it's all kind of like fighter jet toggles up here however i will say uh, my favorite one probably is this uh, this is your ambient light um, adjustment so uh, it's gonna be hard to show you right now but there is uh, some ambient lighting all throughout the car what you do is you just hold this little switch right here and it'll toggle through all the interior uh, ambient colors uh, don't get me wrong it's not that bright it's kind of the early days of uh, interior mood lighting and ambient colors but it's just so cool that uh, especially at that time Mini Cooper was putting that kind of stuff in these cars whereas nowadays a lot of these luxury cars have those interior lights and one more thing I noticed about this car is this little red thing up here I'm not sure what this is uh, it's just like a red it's not a button and it I, I want to say it's a light but it's not it doesn't light up so if any of you guys in the comments know what this is uh, and you want to let me know, I'm really curious to see what this is and if it has any function or if it's just some sort of design element that Mini Cooper has put in the car. And then last but not least is the uh, glove box. So this is your glove box right here. Uh, pretty standard, nothing special about that. But what some people may not know is that a lot of these Mini Coopers have one more additional storage right here. So if you go ahead and push that, goes and pops right open and it's very BMW-esque because of course BMW is the one who makes these cars um, and it's just that very German influenced over engineering kind of stuff that BMW and Mercedes and Audi do with their cars. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was kind of a quick one I wanted to put together because I saw this car sitting in the lot and I was like I really want to make a video on it. I know as a Mini Cooper it's not that different. Uh, the big thing about it is pretty much just the shape of it and the design. And if you guys like this video be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more. And if you guys are interested in this particular example, be sure to come check it out at Jim Coleman Infinity. And thanks for watching.